Did you ever hear about Dionisio Farid Rodriguez, a Mexican who played with the under 20 team of Juventus and was that close guys, that close of joining the first team of Juve. No, you never heard about him? It makes totally sense. Why? Because there was no Mexican ever in the history of Juve that was that close of joining the first team. And uh, there is no under 20 team at Juventus. Makes totally sense. Guys, the story I will tell you about Dionisio is probably one of the biggest identity theft in the history of Juve or maybe in the history of football. Let me tell you and let me introduce you to the story of Dionisio his story. The story I told you, biggest theft of identity ever. Dionisio Farid Rodriguez is a Mexican who fooled an entire country, guys. He dreamt about being a big and famous football player and his dream became a fiction. Why? Why is that? Because during a lot of months, uh, around 2017-2018, he became an example to thousands of young Mexican. We were able to see him on television, on uh, giving a lot and a numerous of interviews. He was there at charity events and even more. He was representing the Mexican dream the Mexican dream as a Juve player. But how did it all start? Quite easy. He started actually on Twitter, on Twitter in uh, January 2017, where he started asking for money to sponsor his travel, to travel to Europe, to Juventus, because he had an opportunity to play with Juventus, to do the test, to be admitted to the Young Academy. He started asking fundraising companies but also politicians saying hey I am Mexican I have the opportunity I have no money to travel can you sponsor me he continued with Instagram quite easy you know well known Instagram social media where it's quite easy actually to fake a life to make life more beautiful than it is because he started with a, a picture of him wearing Juventus gear a shirt where he was kissing the badge saying ready for the new journey he started with that picture and then added picture on picture on picture picture of uh, actually some players of the young academy while they were celebrating with him actually from the back with that famous number 17. The problem is uh, he was not the player. He was not the player wearing that number 17. He continued with a team celebration after training where he was actually photoshopping the face of Joao, Joao Serra, a young Portuguese player that was actually really with the young academy of Juventus. He photoshopped his face on it and then he continued. He continued with posting pictures of the team and every time with him uh, in beautiful shirts of Juve and so on. And actually it grew that much that he had 16,000 subscribers on Instagram. That's a lot. The Mexicans were really proud of uh, their young boy Dionisio that uh, started to really have a name. They were proud of him and they were wishing him the best on Twitter. Um, his native city or state, Oaxaca in Mexico, they were the first one to be fooled by his story because at a certain moment he contacted them telling them that he had a, a few days off from Juve and uh, he was was ready, ready to explain his story to Oaxaca, to the state where he was born, the native state, to make actually Mexican proud of his beautiful story. The problem was that uh, he started asking money, money for public speaking, for visiting kids at the hospital, to sign autographs, also to the inauguration of some football fields. He asked a lot of money and the beautiful thing is he received all that money. The lie didn't stop there. No, no, Dionisio didn't stop. He wanted every time bigger and bigger and bigger what a beautiful story because he started to give some interviews to local media to papers to also television and the story became bigger and bigger what a beautiful story i was listening to the interview guys what he's selling there is beautiful beautiful he explained actually the start the start of how he became a uh, mexican pride he said that uh he was playing for lobos buap and then he went to Pumas in Mexico, uh, second division, bigger team. He said that uh, with Pumas, he had to travel to the United States. And there he was spotted by three big European teams. He was spotted by uh, Getafe, by, uh, you know, the Spanish team, by uh, Rayo Vallecano, and then by Juventus. 
What a big dream! Juventus calling him and spotting him and he decided to travel to Italy for the test. The test that uh, uh, were actually challenging. It was a big challenge for him to stay and remain at Juve. Why? First of all, because he had no money. He had no money at all, so he was explaining that he was living in the airport without food, without drink, and no, he had no money. The drink that he had, the water that he was drinking, was the water from the airport. That's his beautiful story. Fake story, we know today that it's a fake story, but it's a beautiful story, and he said that it was not the only challenging thing, because he had to compete with 500 other people from all over the world competing for a spot to remain at Juve at the Young Academy. Then he said that one of the tests, because his imagination is that big, he is really creative, are Dionisio. He's saying that uh, one of the tests was actually to shoot 50 times towards the goal. He was really nervous, he took five attempts and he missed all of them, but luckily, because he's a really great talent, luckily he scored the 45 remaining one. He said that they scored uh, our already 10 goals now with the young academy of Juve with the under 20 I repeat you under 20 doesn't exist but he already scored 10 goals despite being a defender and despite being a short defender because he was 19 but 1 meter 79 he was not that tall but he said the measurement is not that important if you have the grinta the grinta is that is important he said that when he arrived uh, and he was starting with the young academy he had probably 40% chances to arrive one day with the big team with the first team with our beloved Juventus and now today he said that uh is closer to the first team because he has already 90% of chances to be there, to be there with the first team. That's how he closed the interview. ESPN, you know, ESPN, a big uh, uh, media, a bit professional media, they heard about that story of that uh, Mexican glory and they were saying, uh, we want to interview. They contacted him numerous times and he was always declining. Probably Dionisio, he was not that stupid. He knew, he knew about the fact that probably ESPN revealing his story would made sure that uh, it was a fake story. So he declined time after time after time and then you will tell me Beppe, but uh, Dionisio, where is he today? Uh, how is it possible that that story became that long and uh, that he earned so many money for the charity events and so on and so on without nobody spotting the truth? Well, the truth was spotted the day that uh, some people went into the Mexican Federation sites and they were looking for his name. The problem is that uh, he was nowhere to find. Nowhere to find his name was nowhere. The only thing that he played at was the first team, Lobos Buap, where he did for one year long a lot of tests and every time he was actually declined. He never succeeded as a footballer. After that the truth were revealed, the funny thing is on top of that, he's also been known as the son of someone that was uh, in the selection to be president of the state where he was living, uh, Nivardo Rodriguez, more or less his father, local politician, but uh, unfortunately also for him, he failed to be elected. Guys, since that day where the truth came out, uh, our friend Dionisio, he closed all social medias, uh, it was over, he closed all of them. We have no news about him anymore, and uh, uh, yeah, we will never probably see that number 17, Dionisio, playing with the first team of Juventus, guys, that was the story, the long story of Dionisio, uh, what a strange fairy tale, uh, Juventus tales, I hope you enjoyed it, guys, uh, don't fake, don't fake on Instagram, because uh, one day or the other, the truth will be there, exposed to everyone, grazie, forza, Juve.